Before you begin to provide immunizations as a service, you will need to be in compliance with the Occupational Safety and Health Administration's Bloodborne Pathogen Standard. When preparing to give an injection, you will first need to set up your supplies. These items include the vaccine for injection and the diluent if it needs to be reconstituted, alcohol swabs, cotton swabs or gauze, adhesive bandages, a syringe and needle of appropriate size, gauge, and length, synthetic gloves, sharps container, absorbent pad to cover the workspace, emergency kit that contains epinephrine. Set up your supplies in a private or semi-private area that includes a chair and workspace for patient comfort and safety. Arrange the physical space to allow for fainting without injury plus access to a hard surface if CPR is needed. Provide your patient with the vaccine information statement as required by law and review any applicable screening questions with the patient. Ask the patient if he or she has any questions about the immunization. You are now ready to prepare your syringe and patient for injection. To prepare your syringe for injection, you will need to do the following. Remove the plastic cap from the vial, Swab the top of the vial with alcohol in one swift motion. Fill the syringe with air, equivalent to the volume of vaccine you need to withdraw. For example, if you need to inject half a milliliter of vaccine, pull back the plunger to the 0.5 milliliter mark. Insert the needle through the stopper in the top of the vial. Inject the air. Invert the syringe and vial and withdraw the required amount of vaccine. Remove any large air bubbles. Once you have the correct volume in the syringe, remove the needle and syringe from the vial. At this point, you may do one of two things. Recap the syringe for later use, or inject the vaccine directly into the patient. If you are not injecting the vaccine into the patient right away, you may recap the needle. At this point, it is okay to recap the needle since it has not entered a patient and is still sterile. Never recap a needle that has been inserted into a patient. There are multiple ways to provide an intramuscular injection. We will demonstrate a couple. Once you're ready to inject the vaccine, proceed as follows. Although gloves are not required, it may be prudent to use gloves for your protection and patient perceptions. Follow your local standards. Be sure your patient is sitting. Expose the injection site, which is the thickest and central portion of the deltoid muscle. Swab the injection site with alcohol. Allow the alcohol to dry. Note that the sharps container is readily accessible. Hold the syringe near the hub. Insert the needle at a 90 degree angle all the way to the hub of the needle. Maintain contact with the patient at all times. While supporting the patient and the syringe, depress the plunger in a smooth and coordinated manner. Immediately activate the safety device. Dispose of the syringe and needle in a sharps container. Press the cotton or gauze over the injection site and secure this to the patient using the adhesive bandage. Remove your gloves and wash your hands. Clean your workspace. Provide your patient with post-injection counseling and follow-up instructions. Document the injection given while maintaining compliance with all legal requirements. Hold the syringe near the hub. Insert the needle at a 90 degree angle all the way to the hub of the needle. Maintain contact with the patient at all times. While supporting the patient and the syringe, depress the plunger in a smooth and coordinated manner. Quickly withdraw the needle. Immediately activate the safety device. Dispose of the syringe and needle in a sharps container. Once you're ready to inject the vaccine, proceed as follows. Although gloves are not required, 
It may be prudent to use gloves for your protection and patient perceptions. Follow your local standards. Be sure your patient is sitting. Expose the injection site, which is on the posterolateral aspect of the upper arm. Swab the injection site with alcohol. Allow the alcohol to dry. Note that the sharps container is readily accessible. Hold the syringe near the hub. Pinch a fold of skin and insert the needle at a 45 degree angle to the hub of the needle. Maintain contact with the patient at all times. While supporting the patient and the syringe, depress the plunger in a smooth and coordinated manner. Quickly withdraw the needle. Immediately activate the safety device. Dispose of the syringe and needle in a sharps container. Press the cotton or gauze over the injection site and secure this to the patient using the adhesive bandage. Remove your gloves and wash your hands. Clean your workspace. Provide your patient with post-injection counseling and follow-up instructions. Document the injection given while maintaining compliance with all legal requirements. Be sure your patient is sitting. Hand the patient a tissue to hold in the event there is post-vaccine nasal discharge or sneezing. Although gloves are not required, it may be prudent to use gloves for your protection and patient perceptions. Follow your local standards. Remove the rubber tip protector. As you can see, some degree of force is needed to deliver the intranasal vaccine. The patient should be in an upright position. The patient's head should be tilted back slightly. Place the tip inside one nostril. With a single motion, depress the plunger as rapidly as possible until the dose divider clip prevents you from going further. Remove the tip from the patient's nose and then remove the dose divider clip. Administer the remaining dose into the other nostril. Discard the syringe in a biohazard container. Remove your gloves and wash your hands. Clean your workspace. Provide your patient with post-delivery counseling and follow-up instructions. Document the immunization given while maintaining compliance with all legal requirements for documentation. If the vaccine given was part of a series, you may want to consider scheduling your patient for the next injection needed. If you have questions regarding this instructional video or would like additional information, please contact the American Pharmacists Association Education Department.